Hello, hello, hello. Today, a difficult problem. It's not a high school problem. It's a coupled oscillator. This is not the first time that I'm doing a coupled oscillator. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with coupled oscillators, you have two choices not to do the problem or to study my lecture under my playlist 803, the lecture on coupled oscillators. Okay, let's take a look. A horizontal surface without friction. Two masses, M1 and M2. This spring is connected to a wall, and this spring is connected to a wall. But the whole system is on the horizontal plane. Spring constant K, spring constant K1, spring constant K. So, a typical example of what we call a coupled oscillator. This motion is coupled to this one. Therefore, as you may remember, when you have two coupled oscillators, you get always two normal modes, two resonance frequencies. And I want you to calculate what these normal mode frequencies are. You can give them in terms of omega, which is radians per second, which is fine. If you prefer periods, that is also fine in seconds. Period is 2 pi divided by omega, that's also fine. I want three digit precision. I want you to use these numbers, numerical numbers, because that's the only way for me to check whether your solution is correct. I cannot go over the mass, that is way too complicated. So we use M1 is 1 kilogram, M2 is 2 kilograms, K is 2 newtons per meter, per meter and K1 is 3 newtons per meter. Now, I want you to do what we consider in physics consistency checks. You make a change in the problem so that you can immediately predict the answer. And since you will solve the equation first in terms of general symbols, k, k1, m1, m2, you should check, you should do a few consistency checks and I will recommend two of them. So in your solution, make the assumption that omega 1 is infinity. So this object can never move. There's no longer a coupled oscillation. So this object is going to move under the influence of this spring and that spring. And so it should be immediately obvious that omega is the square root of k plus k1 divided by m2. Another consistency check. Make k1 zero. So it's not there. So again, we have no coupled oscillators. So clearly, this object is going to oscillate square root of k over m1 and that object is going to oscillate with the square root of k over m2. But they are not coupled anymore. They are two single oscillations. All right. Yes, I agree, it is not a simple problem. It is a typical problem for second year college physics, maybe in some cases first year college physics. 
In any case, I cover them in my 803 lectures. Okay? If you have the patience, watch my 803 lecture of coupled oscillators. But if you get confused, don't feel bad, then just don't answer it. I don't expect too many answers. Uh, that's perfectly okay. Occasionally I do a difficult problem because many of you ask me, well not many, but several of you ask me, make a difficult problem. Well, this is a difficult problem in my book. I call this a difficult problem. Okay, have a nice day, take care and good luck with the problem. Yes, of course, whether you can do the problem or not, of course we will remain friends. That goes without saying. After I had recorded this problem, <laughs> I noticed a slip of the tongue. I meant to say, if you make M1 infinitely large, then you have an obvious answer to the problem. But I say omega, I didn't mean omega, okay? So M1 infinity, not omega. <laughs>